shall we uh, uh, hit the hit, hit the finale here? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's yeah. go to our, our closing segment for the day. For the first time ever, we are bringing a closing segment back. It is time for Top Fives. Uh, in this segment, we are going to give a top five list about something, kind of depending on what is relevant at the moment, something generally going to be something that relates to to current events in sports. Uh, Zevin, what, are, what is our top five list today? So in honor of, and we're not going to include Brady in this, sort of like, just like last time we did the top, top five best two-year starts, and so we didn't include Mahomes because he was who we were basing it off of. So because Brady is going to debut this weekend uh, with – freaking Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that's just still weird to say. We're not going to include him in it because this segment is sort of inspired by him, based on him. So we're not going to include him. But besides Tom Brady, we're going to name the top five uh, weirdest uh, jerseys to see an athlete wear. You know, someone who's known for playing with one franchise. He's on what team? Like, what? Like, it's so weird to see someone in a jersey. That's our top five today. And so without further ado, uh, who is number five? on your uh, list. All right, with number five, uh, this is as personal a choice as any, probably on almost nobody else's top five list, but it's just, this one is just so weird to me. Patrick Marlowe on the Pittsburgh Penguins is just, it's funny, we were just talking about the Sharks and their run to the cup. It is so strange to see him, not only in those colors, but in the uniform of the team that beat him in his only Stanley Cup final appearance. It's just, there, those two things combined make it so odd, I mean, especially because he is, he was, you know, n- number one overall pick by the Sharks back in 98, maybe, and then played like, what, 18 or 19 seasons with them. And then he's gone on the league, came back to the Sharks for a little bit. And now, I mean, like, I remember the first time I saw him in a, in a black and yellow jersey, it just like, it, it just felt like I was in the upside down. Like, just something had gone wrong with the universe. And I know that you know, to a lot of people, it doesn't sort of have the same significance for me as a Sharks fan, but totally. I had, I couldn't not include him on my list. Yeah, that, that, that's totally, that's totally legit. And I have to say too, I mean, you know, he, I mean, he, he's been such a staple of our childhood sports watching, which again, what happens in your childhood is going to resonate more. And so when something like that happens, it's just, I don't know. It just, it's very more jarring when stuff like that happens. Like, you know, I had John to the Chi Chi jersey for a while. I'm sure no one's going to know who the hell that is, who the heck that is. Uh, but when he, when he got traded, that was really rough for me, too. Mm-hmm. So. I, love how, I love how you cursed, like, four times during this episode and then feel a need to correct hell the heck. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, we tried to, limit it back, tried to limit it back, but, you know. Uh, but right. Actually. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so my number five is actually similar, similar, similarly personal. Okay. Uh, my number five is uh, seeing uh, Richard Sherman in a 49ers jersey, which is just so – I mean, I know it's been a few years now, and it's just still so weird. I mean, obviously, the NMC title game, when he was like, that's what – you know, Crabtree talks and like me, like, he's no sorry receiver, like Crabtree. I don't even know what I'm saying, but it's something, you know. I know what you're talking and, about. So, yeah, I was talking about Crabtree, like, Yelling in, in the like into the microphone, like into uh, Aaron Andrews' face. I mean, we Niners fans, like we hated him. We hated him. And then you know, look. So there's there's that. And I think Richard Sherman is, is one of those cases where. So not only is it weird to see him in another jersey that's not the Seahawks because he's like a Seahawk, you know, for you know he yeah. profited the Super Bowl is part of the Legion of Boom, one of the most scary defenses of all time. Like it would be weird to see him in any other uniform. But if, if he went and signed with like the Titans, he wouldn't be on my list. The fact that he went to sign, you know, with this, this, like the Seahawks' biggest rival, in part to stick it to the Seahawks, you know, again, he signed an, an incentive-laden contract so he could prove himself, just to show everybody. But the fact that he signed with the Niners is just so – it's just still – it's just – it's still weird. Like, I, have to, I like have to root for him now. It's just odd. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when, when, I, when I found out, like – because, you know, the, the, the way transactions go these days is first you hear that, like, they're nearing a, a contract, and then you hear, it, like, it's official. Exactly. So when I heard that they were, like, nearing, they were, like, in negotiation, I was like, oh, okay. Let's, let's see how this goes. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I, no, <laughs> he's, I mean, been I was, for, he's been great for us. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. No, my number four, yeah. I'm going with Hakeem Olajuwon on the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, for me, this came down to him and Patrick Ewing. And I went with Hakeem because I feel like because Hakeem, you know, brought a couple of titles to Houston, so he's sort of more 
iconic and, and revered in, in that regard. And also Hakeem's sort of a little bit higher on an all-time on an like all-time players list. So I decided to go with him uh, over over Ewing. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's totally fair. You know, I mean, get, I mean he, he's probably he's probably the most beloved Rocket. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. And I think any time a, a career player like that uh, switches teams, it's definitely a shot. Yeah, I, that, that's a good list. Which actually, my four is very similar. My number four is. Uh, when Ichiro got traded to the Yankees, while the Mariners were playing the Yankees, and then he just went to to the change dugouts. That's, uh, that's still so weird to me. I remember I was found out I was a camp counselor at the time, and I one of my kids, I think I think one of my kids was either I think I had one huge Mariners fan and one one huge Yankees fan in my bunk, and so that, that was really weird to like explain to them. Like that that was just very shocking. Um, it's definitely fun to break sports things to to kids. Uh, you know, you had to have that in the palm of your hand. I was one of those kids too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just always so weird. When you read the phone and no one else like had. Exactly. And people have to wait for their parents' emails or their letters or whatever, like, mm-hmm. you know, print it out or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, Ichiro is obviously lifelong man. I mean, that, that's the franchise who brought him over. You know, had he come, you know, earlier in his life, he would have demolished Pete Rose's hit record. Um, I think he demolished, but he, he would have he would beaten have been, it, I think. Yeah. And so to see him with, with another team, again, especially with the Yankees, you know, who they were set to play that day, it was just very, yeah, just, just very weird. Mm-hmm. You know, Ichiro is probably, probably second only to, to, to Griffey uh, in, terms of, in terms of iconic Mariners. So it was, def- it was definitely weird seeing him in another uniform. Um, with, my, with my number three, I'm also going with baseball. Uh, I'm going a little bit uh, old school on this one. I'm going to Willie Mays on the New York Mets, which was, you know, right at the end of his career, you know, seeing him in anything other than Giants jersey is super off-putting, especially, you know, when he was, when he, when he signed with the Mets, I think he was like 40 or 41. So, you know, he was in another uniform and he looked really old, which I think just what I think adds to the, the weirdness of the whole thing, you know, seeing this guy was such a, prime athlete because I mean he is probably the greatest five tool player of all time and he you know at a point where he's you know past his prime and couldn't really do the same and to see him in a uniform other than the one on the for the team which we did all the great stuff is is very is very very strange no listen especially as a Giants fan I do not blame you one bit Mm -hmm. I don't blame you one bit at all especially I mean he's he's one of the greatest players ever. And, you know, look, I'm, I always love, I mean, I know people kind of criticize the Lakers for paying Kobe all that extra money at, at the end of his career. But I think part of the reason they did that was not necessarily to win, but to show other people how they treated their stars, which I think right. gains them sort of credibility for the future. Yeah, I mean, and can, you imagine, can you imagine if like post torn Achilles Kobe had like wrapped up his career by struggling not on the Lakers, but on like the Timberwolves or something? People would have been like the Lakers, like they would have been like screw you. Right. Exactly. It's not how you treat one of your legends, for sure. Um, um, there's actually speaking of Kobe, uh, my uh, number three is MJ and the Wizards. Kind of an easy one. I know it's kind of a short putt, a layup, no pun intended, but it's still so weird. I mean, we just came off of watching The Last Dance, and so you know, obviously, you know, everyone kind of pictures him. You know, his last image in basketball is draining the shot after may after maybe or maybe not pushing off Byron Russell. I think we still don't know if he pushed off or I don't know if Bob Costas was saying, you know, his momentum was carrying him. But uh, so that's kind of what we like to imagine as his last image, but it's, it's weird to think about him playing in his late thirties uh, with the wizards. It just, even I'm looking at a picture with him on my phone. It's just very odd to see him in a Jersey. That's not the bulls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think it's also I mean, worth noting. First of all, I'm not sure there aren't many athletes more connected to their team like ever than, than Jordan is to the Bulls. Um, totally. So that's, that's where you know itself. I think it's interesting to remember, you know, it, with the Wizards, he was still at like a 20 points per game scorer. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, he didn't, didn't, I don't think he shot a great percentage from the field, but it's just interesting to think of like if he, if he never left to play baseball or and if he never retired the second time and just kind of kept playing the whole way through, like how much even greater could he have been? Yeah, totally. Okay. My number two. Uh, is very is very fitting. You early you said Richard Sherman on the 49ers. I'm kind of flipping that against on its head, and I'm saying Jerry Rice on the Seattle Seahawks. Okay, I, mean, I, I consider that. I I think it's sort of 
had like a little something extra added to it with the development of the 49ers Seahawks rivalry. I think yeah. if, that, if that never happened, I mean, it was not quite as weird because they're just two teams in the same division. They don't have that same animosity. But with the context of, of everything that's happened, and now that we're in 2020, seeing an iconic 49er in a Seahawks jersey, you know, running routes and everything, just is, feels really off. And I think that because, of the, because we're judging this, you know, with, in 2020 with, with our sort of modern sensibilities, you know, we have to take that into totally. consideration. And that's why, that's why I put him. That's totally legit. It's funny. I, I considered putting him on this list, but my I would have put him as just purely, you know, as, as like a, as a like wearing a Raiders uh, jersey, uh-huh. just because you know in the Bay all of a sudden now he's on the other side and a, you know Gruden called him up. Um, I mean I don't know, but both are equally weird. I mean, Nine Eyes have always had a weird ri- rivalry with Raiders fans before they moved to Vegas. It's kind of not a rivalry between the teams, but more between the fans. So it's kind of weird in that way. But I think the Seahawks is a totally. A uh, reasonable choice too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I I'll just give away a little bit. My 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 top two are both quarterbacks, so people might have an idea where this is going. But my number two was actually kind of weird. So I I know Brett Favre, he, you know he didn't play with the Vikings right away. Like I know you know it was weird. It was weird to see him on the Jets, but I'm for the way I'm classifying this to see him in a Vikings jersey again because they're you know they're one of the Packers' biggest rival rivals you know, in the NFC North. To see him on on the Vikings, and then for them to almost win a Super Bowl, which is so crazy, you know. Again, like the Jets, that's fine. Like people, you know, players sometimes finish out their careers on another team. Like obviously Montana on the Chiefs, like that's fine. But to go to like a hated rival and then to actually play so well, like he did for that one year, is still when I when, when I watch highlights, that's still just so shocking to me. Again, Favre is you know Mr. Packer. They have the great you know Bart Starr to Rogers to the Favre to Rogers. Uh, kind of lineage and to see him play on another team a it's weird and then b especially with, with the Packers just drafting Jordan Love it's kind of made me reminisce like okay like you know Rodgers he's not gonna finish his career on the Packers now I think we can safely say so like where is he gonna go and man that's gonna seem like you know it's sort of I don't know it's sort of I think we imagine things getting weirder before they happen and then after they happen for a while like I'm kind of get used to it so like right now like just picturing Aaron Rodgers on another team it's like that's so weird but after a year or two we'll kind of get used to it um but that, yeah, to me, that's part of why I'm putting fire is because his who replaced him is about to, the same thing's gonna happen to him, and the fact that he ended up on, you know, division rival is just still just odd to me when I when I watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Favre is a really long deal, but you know, Favre is a really interesting case just because of the way his relationship with the Packers ended, with all the sort of the drama and the tension and the. Retiring and unretiring, and retiring like eighty-four times, <laughs> right, and constantly changing his mind. And then, so by the by the by the time he got to the Vikings, there was there had already been so much drama and so much insanity that seeing him in a Vikings uniform was to me just kind of like the next step in yeah, that. Um, so that, that's why that's why I don't have him on my list. Um, but I I totally get what you're saying, like especially because one of one of the big things I I factored into my list was how weird do they look in that uniform versus whatever other uniform they used to have? Yeah. And seeing Brett Favre in purple, definitely. It's so weird. Yeah. And again, part of why, again, I, I didn't pick the Jets for like similar, for similar reasons to what you said. But again, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's not the whole criteria as you'll see with my number one. Um, but man, just, it's, it's, all, it's not just, you know, looking weird, but it's also what team you go to after your sort of team that you've been with for a while. Like, like Richard Sherman went to the biggest rival. Brett Favre went to like the second biggest rival. So it just, it's part of it, it again. That's why I didn't pick the Jets. But part of it is who um, that franchise player ends up um, signing with. So mm-hmm. who's, All right. Who's numero uno? Keep, well, keep, I think keeping in tradition with last time, we'll yeah. just remember you give the number one. Okay. Because I gave the number one last time when you started it. Okay. So who's, who's your number one? Oh, I'm wearing this Colts hat, and it's sort of fitting. Uh, it was very. I, was, I think I sort of gave it away, but we can we can do we can do a drummer. I, I didn't do a great job of holding up suspense, but Go we'll, ahead. We'll, 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 we'll put in a good graphic for this. But seeing Peyton Manning in another uniform, and again, I know it, it, it made sense because Andrew Luck was a generational talent, and boy, did we freaking screw that one up. But it, it made sense to get rid of Peyton Manning, and it, it, and it just still was just hard to accept. You know, there was no way to. It didn't make sense to keep them both. So the decision made sense. It's not that it was shocking, 
but to actually see him do it again as a Colts fan, I'm sure it's not like this for other people, but like you mentioned, you know, Patrick, Patrick Marlowe, this one's just really personal to me. And then to see him throw for 55 touchdowns and win an MVP and then go to two Super Bowls and win one was just, I get rooted for him. I love and I will always love the guy, but that was really difficult. That, that was, that, that was hard. And again, it, it made sense. It was just one of those, you know, sort of like when you break up with somebody, like, you know what's the right thing, but it doesn't make it any easier. It's one of those things. It was just, you know, he he made Indiana into a, as much of a football state as it was a basketball state, which was pretty unthinkable 20 or 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that that was just really hard for me and for a lot of um, my my friends in Bloomington and all, all over Indiana. So. Yeah. Okay. You know, you definitely you definitely have a different stake in that one than I do as a Colts fan. I know that's not the general consensus, but yeah. yeah. No. Okay. No, I, I, I get where you come from on that one. And I mean, and this guy's like, he's one of the three greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game. So it's not, you know, and again, I, I know it'd be, someone might say Joe Montana. It's just hard because we weren't alive for that. So it's just, it's maybe that's my, why my list is more recent, but also like he, I don't know. It just be, because I didn't watch it happen. It's just didn't hit, you know, it just probably hit something differently for me, but I mean, you, you make a similar case to Joe Montana who had success with the chiefs too, but, mm-hmm. but anyway. Yeah. I will, I will just say really quick, the reason I actually – I was talking about, you know, what, the, what you look like in the uniform. Part of the reason I left Joe Montana yeah. off my list is that the Chiefs have such similar colors to the 49ers that, like, at a, at a quick glance at Montana Chiefs uniform, you might think he was still in the 49ers. So, like, so kind of for, kind of for that – because there's, like, a couple different factors, you know, how iconic the athlete was to their old team, but also what they, what they looked like in the old uniform in Montana doesn't really have that one going for him. So, that's, so that was sort of a like, mm-hmm. knockdown for him. All right, my number one is someone – we didn't go over these lists with each other ahead of time, and my number one is, quite frankly, the person I thought you were going to have as your number one. I thought we were going to have the same guy. Um, He was on your list, though, Michael Jordan on the Washington Wizards. Okay. No one one will ever picture him in anything other than a a Bulls uniform, ever. And to see him wearing something else after coming back from a second retirement at 40 years old – is just very, 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 very infinite number of varies weird. <laughs> uh, that there's there isn't like a, a more in depth explanation I feel like I can give than that. Colors just, too, like you said. You know, and, and like the the Washington Wizards. I mean, and he has the other thing going for him, where a Wizards uniform, especially at that time, looks so different from a Bulls uniform in terms totally. of the color scheme and the logo and the design. You know, like the I don't know, the gold and the blue and Stuff like that. It just didn't. It didn't feel like the 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 Jordan that became you know one of the most iconic athletes of all time. Well, I, I totally agree, and I think again for me, we get far is probably one of the like seven or eight greatest quarterbacks ever. And again, just to see him in a in a rivals uniform was just weird. And then obviously Peyton, it being so personal for me, like that was, was probably because I was like a kid too, and it was just so freaking hard for me to to deal with that. It was that was, and then I, I knew we were going to be good with luck, but that was it was still really hard to say goodbye to him. Um, but yeah, it's it's certainly if I was if I was going by an objective perspective, he would probably be my number one. And I'm not trying to criticize. Yeah, you. No, 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 of course, I'm just saying. Of yeah, yeah. By the way, I mean Patrick Myler probably would make most people's list, but again, it's, that's, that's the beauty of sports. Obviously, everyone has their own. Uh, everyone has their own uh, heartstrings that can get pulled. So. 